Welcome back, my Welty family. Rosendo Rodriguez, welding fly dust. It's been a while. So, check this out. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to weld on a 3 8 plate, 1G position with a backing strip. Okay, we're gonna be using 7018 1A stick all the way out. Now, this video is especially for beginners, okay? But anyone can watch it. So, stay tuned. Rock. Weldlife.com, the one stop shop for durable welding goods. So this is going to be our 3 8 plate, we're going to be welding on this. 3 8 plate, and this is our backing strip. Our backing strip is a quarter inch, okay? So before we weld, what do we do? We always got to make sure that we prep our plates, get them nice and clean. So remove all your mill scale, okay? Mill scale front and back and on your bevel. So that means... We're going to be removing our mill scale from our back and strip also, okay? So forget that. Prep is the most important part. First thing first, make sure that you get rid of all your mill scale from the 3 8 plate, including your back and strip. Now, now, you don't have to go all out. You don't have to clean your whole plate, none of that. Just wherever you're going to place your weld, okay? So I only went maybe about a half an inch to an inch onto the plate. That's it. Front and back, okay? So remember, front, back, and your wall. Take your bevels. Now, also, if you look closely, I went ahead and removed my knife edge uh, on the plate. So I have a landing, okay? I placed a 332 landing, okay? So 332 landing on the very edge, both sides, okay? Both plates, if you see it, nice and clean, front and back, your bevel, and a nice landing, okay? 332. Now, my strip is already clean. What size is this? Do y'all remember? This is a quarter inch strip, okay? So, this is how we're gonna tack it now. When we tack it, we're gonna face your plates down, just like this. Now, you're gonna grab that strip, that backing strip that you're gonna use, and you're gonna place it in between your plates, nice and even. Okay, this is gonna act as your spacer. This is gonna be your spacer right in between. Okay, so basically what size spacer? Quarter inch, okay? So go ahead and pull this out. Now, the clean part, you're gonna face it down and place it right in between your gap. Just like that, okay? Now, what you're gonna do here, you're gonna tack the back, okay? But before that, make sure that your backing strip is placed right in the center, right in the center of your weld. You see that underneath? Okay. You don't want your backing strip to be all crooked and jacked up. Try to place it right in the center. So, right in the center, nice and even. Get to the uh, back side. Nice and even. There you have it. So, straight in the middle, right? Now, we're going to tack it. When you put your tacks, you're going you're gonna to quarter your tacks, okay? So we're going to put a tack here, tack here, tack here, and a tack here. And then, one in the middle, and one in the middle on each side. That's it. That's gonna hold your backing strip nice and firm, okay? So remember, we're gonna be welding on a 3 8 plate. It's gonna be a 1G position with a backing strip. Okay, we're gonna be using 7018 1 stick all the way out. All right, so come check this out. So on today's weld, we're gonna be using this Lincoln Electric Power MIG 215 MPI. Now it's a multi-process. It does stick, TIG, MIG, flux, okay? Does it all. Now, the cool thing about this machine is you open this right on the side and you put your MIG or flux wire right in there. Let's go ahead and set it up for stick. Um, we already got it on stick and we're gonna be running at 145 amps. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and tack it. We're gonna crisscross our tacks, remember, on the opposite side. So we're gonna go ahead and start right over here. Here we go. Alrighty, first tack. Now notice how I place my hand on top of it. Make sure you place your hand on top so your 
Your backing strip doesn't move. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crisscross them. We already got two tags, one in each corner. Now let's do the other corners and then two in the middle. Okay, here we go. Good. All right, so we have a total of two, four, six tags. So one on each corner. All right, crisscross them, remember that. Crisscross and then two in the middle. So nice and simple. Make sure that your, your backing strip is nice and steady, all right, sturdy. Um, now, this is how I was gonna look at the front. You have a quarter inch gap right in the center. Uh, nice little landing, a 332 landing. Nice and clean. And let's go ahead and tack it in position, okay? This is my preferred method. Whenever we tack it, I'm gonna tack it on this corner of your 45, okay? Simple as that. Sounds good? Let's go ahead and tack it. All righty. There we go, there we go. So, let's go ahead and clean it up real quick and we're ready to start. All right guys, so before we get started, if you like any of this gear that I'm using, like this Futura Chop Top, all right, or this Stinger right here, you can check us out on wellife.com, okay? We got tons of gear there. Check us out, all right? So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing first, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start on our very first pass. What we're gonna do is call a root. Now, root pass, we're gonna start a little bit before the edge of our plate. So maybe about a half inch or so. So we're gonna start here, and we're gonna start going up and down, zigzag. We're gonna zigzag this nice and tight. Now, every time you zigzag and you touch both walls, I need you to pause on each wall for about two seconds, two fast uh, seconds, okay? So it's gonna look like this, check it out. So we're gonna strike an arc before our edge of the plate and then move up to the wall, count one, two, down one, two, up one, two, down one, two. Zigzag it, nice and tight, nice and slow. Now, make sure that you're feeding your rod at all times, okay? Now, what I need you to do, I need you to start making your wells on the outside of your plate, make them look like a ramp, okay? So, I don't want you to start on the very edge of your plate. Why? Because it starts to look kind of messy. So. We're gonna make like a little ramp, okay? So we need you to start away from your, the edge of your plate. So away from your plate, into your plate, okay? Let's go ahead and start. It's gonna look like a ramp, okay? All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and strike an arc. To the edge of your plate. One, two, 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 one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You can barely see me weaving, but I am. I can feel the walls. Watch my angle that I'm using on my stick rod, okay? I'm going to explain it in just a bit. Pull out. Let's clean this out real quick. So, whenever we're welding, and you're using a stick rod, I'm using a 10, 15 degrees towards me, down, and a 10, 15 degree away from me. So this is the angle that you want to weld with, okay? 10, 15 degrees towards me, 10, 15 degrees away from me. Kind of like if you're painting with a brush, you're leading with the back, okay, the back of your stick rod. 10, 15 towards me, 10, 15 away from me. This is the angle that you want at all times, all the way across, okay? Don't change it towards the end. Keep it the same all the way through. Make sure you're touching both walls. All the way through. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Try to count. You want to hear yourself counting so you can touch the walls. All the way through. Keep going. Keep going. Maybe about a half inch to an inch. Pull out. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. That was your root pass, okay? Very simple. Most of the times, your root pass is not gonna look as pretty. Your very first pass, you're trying to get into that groove and so. It's okay. Um, make sure that you clean your wells after every pass. Make sure there's no slag whatsoever. Check it for porosity or any imperfections, okay? Good wells at all times, right? Now we're gonna start doing our hot pass. We're gonna strike an arc right where we started on our root pass. Strike an arc, travel across until you hit the edge of your, of your uh, plate. And we're gonna uh, pause for two seconds on each wall. So we're gonna zigzag it all the way across. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two on each wall. Sounds good? So we're gonna zigzag it all the way through. Look how I'm zigzagging. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Keep a tight arc. Feed, feed. All the way through, don't anticipate the end. Pull out, pop out just like that. Let's go ahead and clean it. Let's go ahead and do a restart. Keep going, keep going into your backing strip. Pull out. All right, that was a hot pass. So we zigzag our hot pass. Why do we uh, zigzag it? Why do we uh, weave it from wall to wall? Because our groove is still narrow. Um, once you start to get to a wider groove, then you can start doing your stringers, okay? So let's go ahead and start doing stringers now. We're gonna start from bottom to top, okay? So same amperage. We're gonna drag it, all right, all the way across. Here we go. All right, it. That was our very first fill, okay? First fill from bottom to top. So we didn't weave it. All we had to do is just drag it all the way across, okay? So now we're gonna do our next uh, fill. It's gonna be right on top of it. Here we go. Dragging it nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and steady. We're feeding at all times. Good angle all the way through. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're still under flush on our fill, okay? So uh, we're gonna run another fill from bottom to top, same technique. We're gonna drag it all the way across, okay? If you see that you need a little bit less metal in some areas, go ahead and go a little bit faster than normal, uh, and, then, and then do your, your top one, your second fill. Here we go, same concept, strike an arc before. Bottom to top. All right. It. So there we have it. That was our last fill on the bottom part, okay? The bottom side. Now, we're gonna do another fill right above it, and that should be nicely flush, okay? So, same concept. We're gonna drag it. We're gonna be going 145 amps all the way across. All right. It. Now that we're done with our fills, you want to inspect your wells, make sure that you have no porosity, no trap slag. We're going to check for our high spots. Uh, I'm probably going to grind a little bit here, and maybe some here. It's not much, but I want to make it nice and flat for y'all. So uh, let's grind here, maybe a little bit here. When we make our guideline, our guideline is going to go on the bottom bevel, just like this, inside your well, not on the outside. Try to stay inside your bell, your uh, your well, all the way across. This is going to be our guy line right here. Okay, we're going to cap it. We're going to cap it at 145 amps, and all we're going to do is what? Just drag it all the way across. Sounds good. So you want to stay inside your guy line. You're going to look at your puddle. Make sure that you see the guy line inside your puddle. Okay, so you're going to go across. Follow that guy line now. If you can't see the guy line, which happens a lot, so if you can't see the guy line where you're going, make sure 
that you're following that puddle with your face, you're following it, and you're moving with it. What happens most of the time, the reason why you can't see your, your guideline, it's because you're leaving your face behind your puddle. So you're doing this, watch. You're welding, you're welding. You can see your puddle at the beginning, right? Why? Because you're right in front of it. So you're welding, you're welding, you can see it, but then you start losing your guideline. You can't see where it is. Why? Because you're leaving your face behind. You're doing this. You're pushing away. You see that? That's why you can see it at the beginning, but you can't see it at the end. Okay? So you're going to do this. You're going to follow your guideline, and you're going to move your face with your stick rod at the same time, like this. See what I'm doing? and you should be able to see your guideline at all times. Sometimes it's your stick rod blocking your guideline. Move your stick rod a little bit lower, change your angle a little bit lower to where you can see in front of you. Simple as that. Follow the guideline. If you can't see the guideline, bring your stick rod down a little bit, change your angle, or move your face, move your head with the stick rod as you're traveling across. Keep the same angle. All the way through, all the way through. Don't anticipate the end. Same speed all the way through, all the way down. All right, so you're going to follow through all the way across. Do not anticipate the very end, okay? Same speed all the way across. We're going to start doing our second, uh, second cap. Now, on our second cap, we're still going to do another guy line. Our guy line is going to be right above on the toe line, top part of your your first cap so that's that means it's going to be right on the very edge okay so same method use a 1 8 grinding disc a straight line make sure you make it visible don't dig in there too much okay normal pressure normal steady pressure here we go all right so looking good that was our guideline now we're going to do the same method as our very first cap follow that guideline right in the center okay move around if you can't see it All right, so that was our second cap. Now we're gonna do our very last cap. So this is gonna be a 3B cap. All right, all right, my well to family. So there you have it. We just welded this 1G position, 3 8 plate with a back and strip. Okay, 70, 18, 1 8, all the way out. Okay, very simple. If you like our gear, our durable welding gear, check us out on welllife.com. Okay, we got tons of gear there. Uh, very cool, check it out. Now, you don't want to miss out on the next video, uh, welding fly duck here. Please comment, like, subscribe. All right, leave me a message. Sounds good? I'll see you guys next time. Rock.